What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to HCS Pro Talk, your weekly Halo Esports podcast. This episode is, uh, this, this is episode 305. Mr. 305, Mr. Worldwide. That's Pitbull, right? Is Pitbull Mr. 305? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, cool. Will is huge. Yeah, he's fucking, he's monstrous right now. He's monster boy. He's monster glitch boy. Um, but we're, we're fucking, we're doing the thing. Uh, this is episode 305 for the week of September 17th, 2023. The title of this week's episode is, you fucking guessed it, Halo is for everyone. So, uh, if you don't already know what the topic of this week's show is going to be, then strap the fuck in because there's a lot to talk about. Um, I didn't, okay, so before we get into anything, I want to, I want to just preface anything and everything we're about, we're going to talk about today is that. Um, I don't have a like prepared statement or anything like that. Uh, a lot of this is going to be off the cuff, um, in terms of like emotion, I guess you could say and takes, but please know, and please understand that. And I mean this in all sincerity is that anyone and everyone is welcome. Anyone and everyone should be welcome. Um, and I think that should just be understood. Okay. And also because I know a lot of people, I know there's a lot of people out there that are assholes on both sides, whichever way you look at it. Okay. So I want to make sure that this is understood as well. When I say that Halo is for everyone, I mean it. Halo is for everyone. Does this mean that she should not be able to play the game because of her views? No. She can play the game too. Okay? I think the way that she went about her statements were not the right way to go about them. And we will talk about that when we get to the topic of the show. So again, I just wanted to preface for everybody that is tuning in. Please, for the love of God... No pun intended. Oh, man. We're already kicking things off. Great. Holy shit. Um, Please remain respectful. I know that more often than not, you guys are amazing when it comes to the show. Keeping things respectful. Keeping things cohesive and kind in the chat. So please keep that going. Because I'm not going to lie. If I see it, some terrible shit in the chat. You're getting banned. And it's as simple as that. I don't have time for you. You don't deserve my time. That's going to be the end of it. Okay. Now on the other side of things, if you guys know this show at all or hell, if you're, if you're tuning in for the first time or you're listening for the first time, there's something you should know about this show is that we remain honest with you all plain and simple. Okay. I understand by some of the things that I'm going to say tonight that we're going to potentially make some quote unquote enemies. I don't give a shit because frankly, again, you're not worth my time. Okay. If you don't like what I have to say about some of these things, that's fine. It's your opinion. Move on. My name is Josh, a.k.a. J.K. Fire. This week, I'm joined by the man in the ProTalk hat and the Space Station shirt, Will, a.k.a. I, Mr. Mayhem. Will, how are you doing on this Monday evening? I'm doing all right. Um, Yeah, this is going to be a weird show. It's a heavy topic. And I don't know. I was kind of in a space where I didn't, I know we have to talk about it cause it's what happened, but it's, it's not something I wanted or wanted to talk about or go, th- go through, but yet here we are. Um, but as always excited to talk halo and what's going on around the community. Absolutely. And yeah, absolutely. Well, well how f- are you doing? Oh. sir? I, I'm, what are you wearing? <laughs> I can't, the, the, I got you. You don't share your video with me because we have the way we have to set it up for the yeah. stream. Yeah. So it is weird because Will cannot see me right now unless he has like the preview up for the stream. So there's, there's that, um, wild can joker. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the live show. 
Um, can I make Will a floating head? I could, but it's going to take too long, and I don't have the time for that right now. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm doing all right. It, it's it, uh, you're right, Will. This is going to be a lot of heavy shit to talk about this week, and it's just been like it's just been sitting in the back of the mind ever since the shit came out. So, just you know, want to get it out to the people out there so they understand what's going on if, if they care, and if they don't care, then they can they can just move along, and there's that. Um, but no, I'm doing all right. I am wearing, I believe your shirt, but in hoodie form. Like, are you wearing the SLC space station shirt? It's the one I don't even know. It's the, it's the one with like the arch on the back. Yeah. Yeah. That's the SLC one. So I I am wearing that in hoodie form. So yes, there you go. Um, Yeah. My kid is literally screaming in the background right now. So like I've, I've, I've tried to like, <laughs> I've tried to articulate my thoughts. Split. Yeah. I've tried to articulate my thoughts. while fucking my kid is just going on a rampage above me right now. Oh, no, uh, it, it's okay. It is what it is. Kids are kids. I just, I feel bad for Natana because she's having to deal with her right now. But, um, regardless, I'll deal with her after the show. Well, do you don't want to, you want to know what's coming on this week's episode of the show? What do we got? Community tournaments are announced. Uh, Noob Combo and LVT release new merch. World's information is released and clarified. And our topic of the magic situation. So without further ado, Will, let's get into some competitive news. Pure Delight FFA tournament has been announced. This is by PD and Graceface. It's on Monday, September 25th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, it'll be casted by Graceface and Pure Delight. There'll be a 64 player cap. It's a single elim. There it's free entry, which is fucking awesome. And up for grabs is 4000 Halo credits. So you can uh if you win, you can fucking get those sick ass uh playoff bundles that are going to be available soon too. So, there you go. And then next up we have the 5K Pro Am Open. It's been announced by Cloud9. So yeah, the the open event that they had announced at a previous event. Well, now they finally put it on Twitter. So it took them long enough, but we got there. So it's it's finally on Twitter. Here's the information. Open registration is now through the 23rd of September. Um, the tournament will be on September 23rd at 11 p.m. Uh, 11 a.m. Pacific time. I apologize. 11 a.m. Prize pool is five thousand dollars, and it's broadcasted over at Twitch.tv forward slash Cloud Nine. So there you go. Actually, hold up. Oh, yes. Okay. Because then they also announced at the end of this announcement that there's a 5K Ultimate Open, which will be on October 29th. So the Pro-Am Open is on the 23rd of September, and this 5K Ultimate Open will be on October 29th. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. Um, Sirion, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the live show. And Captain Mo with the five-month resub, you get a woo! Thank you so much for the resub. Greatly appreciated. Um, also, I should have fucking said this. I'm sorry, guys. I'm fucking absolutely scatterbrained this evening. But to those that are tuning in live right now, thank you so much for doing so. Um, Ikuza, Riz, Game Crazy John, Ricky, Shoal Nuff, uh, Fox Too Quick, All in Juan, Zach, Funky, Ben Jammin, Ronan, Pyros. Just want to make sure I'm not missing peeps. Danny Phantom. Captain Moe and Ash and Coach Clutch and Mr. Davey Havoc. Burnaby Jones! <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Hope everyone's having a great night. Uh, and that's for the tournament announcements and the competitive news that we have. Let's talk about some merch. LVT releases new jerseys. This is by LVT. LVT jerseys are ready for print. Get your Founders Edition jersey. They come in black and gold. So go check those out if you're any at all interested. And then NoobCombo.com releases some new merch. by NoobCombo.com. We've upgraded our merch thanks to Acquire and starting out with two T's to celebrate the 2023 Halo World Championship inspired by the birthplace of grunge and the iconic Pike Place Market. More to come soon. Barnaby Jones with the five fucking gifted subs. That means you get a woo, 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 woo. There it is. And yes, I did, John. Yes, I did. I did buy an LVT jersey. And I bought both of fucking Maddie's shirts. So there's that too. Um, 
And then I don't have it included here, but I will include it anyway because, you know, shameless plugs and all that shit. Um, our, our 2023 World's Merch Drop will be live this Wednesday. This Wednesday. It'll be live for everybody. We have shirts. We have joggers. We have shorts. We have posters. We got stickers. We got... A fucking fanny pack because fuck you, Lululemon. We got it all. It'll be available this Wednesday. Make sure you check it out. We'll post it on the socials and all that shit too, so stay tuned. But if you're a patron, then you would already have access to it right now. But it'll be available for everybody this Wednesday. Um, We want to make it available early so people have a chance to get it if they want it and be able to get it ahead of time before the event if they want to wear it at the event. Is Pocket Cast an ad yet? No, it is not. <laughs> no, it is not. Um, blackout. Just letting you know I put a statement in the topic session channel. I can't make the episode right now because I'm currently at work, but hopefully you see that I ping. Thanks you very thank you very much, Blackout. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Um, so there you go. There's the merch announcements for the competitive news. Let's talk about some Halo World Championship information. This is by many. First up, Heinz states that the Halo World Championship will start and end on October 13th, which is the Friday of the event. So day one of the Halo World Championship, the FFA will start and end on the same day. Okay? So just be prepared for that. If you're planning on competing in the FFA, it'll be on that Friday. All right? Cool. Next up, we have the HCS 2023 Playoff Bundles. This is by the HCS. Available in the Halo Infinite shop on September 26th. Each team playoff bundle will include their coding on all armor cores. Yes, all armor cores. Will, right off the rip, I'm putting you on the spot. I want you to give me your favorite bundle and your least favorite bundle. Oh, gosh. I know. I told you. I'm putting you on the fucking spot. I'm sorry. Oh. Um, I'll start with my least favorite and I guess it would have to be the phase one. Sorry, phase. I agree, but it's, it's there, you know, sandstorm bundle, but it's got nothing to do with your team. It looks bland. I don't know if they were going for, Hey, let's blend into solitude. So no one can see us like, uh, (laughs) I don't know. Um, I have been debating this this whole time. Oh, is, shit. I love the Space Station one. Yep. But I also don't love the Space Station one. Yeah. Is it my favorite? I don't know yet. I don't know. And then the Optic is just another white and green one for... I know it's their, like, championship whites, but it doesn't bring anything new to the table. Um... The quadrant one, I think, looks pretty solid, even though it's just, boom, green. <laughs> it, uh, you know, it, it, it replicates their jerseys a little bit, right? Yeah. So that, I like that a lot. Um, Navi's looks decent. I honestly like the gold accents on Sentinels. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know which one's my favorite yet. None of them have stuck out to me. I'll just say that. Maybe maybe I'll go with Sentinels because of the gold accents and its worlds and it matches. There you go. I, actually, I wish there was some blue, like their, like their weapon bundle, yes. but uh, nonetheless. I think I agree with you um, as well. I think Sentinels is my favorite, uh, but I will, I'm will. i going to throw some shout-outs to, um, to uh, Cloud9 and Complexities. I think those look pretty decent as well. The optic- oh, yeah, the, like the lightning thing yeah, with the complexity? Yeah, right? Like the That's optic really one cool. kind of irritates me because they kind of like redid the same thing from last year, like from that mm-hmm. playoff bundle and that playoff bundle looked great. Don't get me wrong. It's just like they did. It, it looks similar, like really similar. Um, and yeah, I agree. I think phases like for those that are interested in that type of coding, like more of the, more of the like muted colors and whatnot, like then that's probably going to be all for you. Like I, you're probably loving it right now. I was just expecting something more instead of like a, like a desert camo type vibe. So yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I would probably say Sentinels being the favorite phase being the non favorite. So but yeah, they're available 
soon. So uh, scoop them up if you want to. And then speaking of coatings, let's talk about the Halo World Championship 2023 Championship Bundle. This is by the HCS. Reach greater heights with the Halo World Championship 2023 Championship Bundle. A portion of the profits will be shared with the 2023 Halo World Champs. Because, you know, crowdfunding is not a thing anymore. Available for a limited time from October 3rd through the 17th, the bundle includes the Victory Wings Armor uh, effects and the Uppercut Chance Armor coating on all cores. Um, I made the joke earlier that I think that the uh, that the uh, Victory Wings look like uh, um, Ultimate Warrior the wrestler yeah like his tassels so that it you know there you go that's cool Bodie, welcome back so yeah you, knowing me i'm probably gonna rock it anyway because fuck it you know um will remember how it was asked i think multiple weeks in a row what's roster lock like for worlds yeah, we, we did get asked that a lot. Yes. Well, we finally have official information from the Waypoint article, and it states that rosters must be maintained from the Fort Worth Major. It must be all four players of the team. Plain and simple. Okay, so if you, quali- if you qualified from Fort Worth, that's the team that you are. And then let's talk about Side tournaments, MCC Halo 5 and Infinite side tournaments with a $5,000 prize pool. Like we had at Fort Worth, the Halo World Championship will also have some side tournaments in Halo MCC, Halo 5, and Halo Infinite that attendees can sign up for on-site for free. Further details on this will be announced soon. Yes, Clutch, yes. And Joe, welcome to the show, and thank you for the follow. Greatly appreciated. Let's move on with the final part of the competitive news, the Tashi's tantalizing tidbits. Ranked meta change. Tashi quote tweeted um, the Halo support tweet, if I'm not mistaken, and said, Ranked snipers rotational is now live until season five launches where the meta will shift a bit with ranked. And then he included like an eyes emoji, you know? And then Schlags was asking about what to expect at Worlds, and he asked, can we expect news on the next roadmap and the meta change for the next season of HCS? Tashi says, no roadmap news, but meta change, yes. And then, speaking of the roadmap, Ash asked about the roadmap reveal at Worlds, and he said, as we've learned, a full roadmap can take a lot of time to put together. I'm wondering, will we learn about perhaps the first major of 2024? And Tashi says, "Mm, wouldn't count on it. So... Hell yeah, we get fucked. Uh, Joe, I have no fucking idea to help you, my dude. Just play a lot. Get recognized while playing. Bada bing, bada boom. Then, the playoff coding bundles. Tashi said the playoff bundle is the final partner team bundle of the year, and the skins look insane. Uh, That's debatable. Don't forget about the Halo World Championship 2023 Victory Wings bundle as well, dropping on October 3rd. Like last year with the Victory Laurels, we will be profit sharing with the team that wins the World Championship. Nappy Cat replied, will all of the other bundles disappear on the 26th? And Tashi says, no, they're meant to stay. So that's pretty cool. Nice to see, Will. You like that. You like that? Oh, God. (laughs) Kirk Cousins coming in here? Kirk Cousins, baby. Oh, my God. Um, Please remember the name. Oh, Joe. Joe for show. I'll remember. Don't worry. Locked in, baby. Locked in. Like I said, play hard, play often, and get recognized while you're playing. That's that's feels like one of the only ways to... uh, get recognized unless you have an in with players already. Like, I mean, bound bound came up from online, you know, he competed. He can, he played a shit ton of online in halo five, um, was climbing I think really the FFAs, right? That's what got him noticed though. I, I forget what it was talked about in the, in the unlocked video. I just know that like he was like, I don't mean this in a negative sense. I mean this like, Seriously, like he was an online warrior. He never complete. He never competed on land. Nobody knew what he looked like, right? So he was playing online for the longest time. He was climbing up those leaderboards. He was being recognized. Like, who the fuck is this young kid? Like, what the hell is going on with this guy? And then, um, 
he was competing in online tournaments and whatnot, and then career took off, you know? Sure enough, I don't disagree with that statement. Like, I, I like Kirk Cousins is, to me, like, the, the best regular season stat pattern. Like he's fucking, he's great during the regular season. Whoopty fucking da. And he's bad in primetime games. Yay. Whatever. That's a rant for another day. Jesus Christ. Um, that's it for the competitive news. Which means it's time for Roster Media. What do we got, Will? All right. Uh, Centenegro releases their North American roster. They state, we have been dreading to share the news with you guys. Our journey alongside our NA team has come to an end. Thank you for your determination and for letting us be a part of your personal growth throughout every single match. We know the incredible players you are and how capable you are. So strive high, Spartans. And that means it's the last shot. Schles, uh, Maisky, and Lursky have been released. Um, then we also have ascending baseline. And they state, although not originally planned, it looks like we will be having a team at Halo World Championship in Seattle after all. Please welcome the Ascending Baseline team for Worlds. Fluxer, Septic, Respectful, Moe's, and Coach Baxter. So, they got it. They got an org. Let's go. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I, I really can't wait to see what happens at Worlds, man. I'm so, I'm so excited. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be fucking crazy. If the last, like, hell, if, if if every event so far this year has been an indication, it's going to be fucking insane. Yeah. So, can, cannot wait to see what happens either. Um, Ikuza, where's the, do you have the proof on that? Like, he hasn't tweeted anything or anything like that, so that's, that's all, that's why I ask. So if you have the deets, let us know. Oh, he said it on stream. Somebody clipped it, said it early on in his Doom stream yesterday. Thank you very much, Akuza. I appreciate that. So what Akuza said was uh, Barcode apparently has his visa. So. so more Barcode next season. Let's go. Yep. So now, now Native White can drop collect and they can pick up Barcode again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, fucking, <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Um. Thank you, Will, for reading through the roster mania. Let's get into some upcoming tournaments of the week presented by NoobCombo.com. Check out NoobCombo.com for all your Hey Louis sports needs. On Saturday, September 23rd, the Autumn Falls 2 Halo CE 3v3 and the Cloud9 5K Pro-Am are taking place. And then on Monday, September 25th, you know, it's the Pure Delights FFA Tournament. So make sure you're signing up and competing in these motherfucking things so they can keep happening because we love them very, very much. And that's it for your upcoming tournaments of the week presented by NoobCombat.com. Check out NoobCombat.com for all your Hey Louise sports needs. And this is where we would have scrim tournament league recaps, but we don't. Well, Oh, what were you going to say? I just, I, I just want to mention, I know scrims don't mean a lot, but... Phase has been on a fucking tear in the scrims. It, it's kind of incredible, right? Well, how, how much they're dominating. Well, do you want me to hold on a second? Just hold <laughs> on. Just hold on. Okay. You're pulling up, pulling it up. So I, because I have to be the asshole here. Okay. <sighs> About just, who they're playing. Yep. Or what? Yes. Just bear with me here. Because I need to be the asshole right now. Are they playing uh, like fucking phenomenally in scrims recently? Yes, absolutely. Do we agree that that scrims aren't everything? Yes, we yeah. agree. Let's let's talk about who they've played. They played. Hold on, I'm catching up here. They played. <laughs> Shopify Rebellion, Sentinels, which is a great win on their part if we're talking about scrim results here. That's fantastic. Native Gaming Red, another, I guess, technically good win on their part, even though I still believe that Native Red is not a top three team, but that's just me. Yeah, I can agree. Um, they stomped G1 and Cloud9 
suspe- like expected. Yes, that one. Th- like when when they went, so they went seventeen and zero against G one and twelve and zero against Cloud Nine, and I'm like, I could, I duh, like you know, not to be an <laughs> asshole, but duh. Um, they thirteen one against Complexity. Again, kind of expected here, but still a dominant, dominant fucking stream results. Thirteen to one, that's impressive. And then Optic Gaming, they beat them nine to four. Optic Gaming typically does really good in scrims, so that one I would put a little bit more merit into for sure. Um, and then Native Gaming White, they went eleven to one. So again, another very dominant victory. But no offense to any of these teams, but I I also don't see Native Gaming White as a top three team. At least not right now. So, you're right though. They have. You are one thousand percent right. They have been fucking dominant in scrims. Well, then, can I give the props to this? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. The fact that they've kept their mental strong during those games and not gotten lax and have been dominating, not not just running with the status quo. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, we're good. We don't have to try hard. No, they're freaking. They're oh, the, bringing it to these teams. The status quo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I completely agree. I completely agree. It's it there yes, I believe that scrims like aren't that meaningful. Um but you are you're 1000% correct and like they have been unbelievably dominant and it it appears as though they're not letting up, which is good because that just shows at least to me and I assume you're going to agree on this is that they they're really trying to put everything they can into making a run at the title. Like it's when you're it, not only, excuse me, not only are you like winning these series, but like you're streaming a lot. They've been streaming a lot recently and putting that work in, right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Ronan, we are legitimately talking about practice right now. All jokes aside, we are talking about practice, (laughs) Um, but yeah, good for them on that. It, it is, it's, it's good to keep the thumbs warm. It's good to, um, be practicing some strategies. It's good to keep your mental in it. Um, it's just good to remain prepared. And we all agree that online is a completely different game than, than playing on LAN. And we know that these scrims are not se- Like you're not fucking playing for any, you're not playing for pinks. You know what I mean? You're not, you're not playing for anything really. So but it's good to see them dominant and hopefully they can bring that fucking fire to worlds because when we had, when we had both Sentinels and phase competing for top eight last event, like no one saw that coming. And I know that they didn't want to be in that situation. Neither of those teams wanted to be in that situation. So I can only assume that their fire is even greater than before. And they're going to, they're going to bring their all. Um, Lottie, welcome back. Says little inside scoop. Currently like 12 hour uh, plus days of grind. PS love you guys. Huge fan. Hey, we're huge fans of you. Hey. We're huge fans of you. Cannot wait to Thanks, fucking Lottie. see you at worlds. Lottie cannot wait to see you. It's going to be awesome. Um, Ronan, we'll see. No, nothing's in the works or anything like that, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, Lottie, we already know you're going to do amazing on the desk as always. Um, Make sure that Dad Bite have has his fucking ass in gear, okay? Because my predictions need to be correct this time, okay? They need to be correct this time, Lonnie. They're wrong all the fucking time. I put so much stock in phase last event. <sighs> uh, yeah, that's all. All jokes aside. All right. Will. Yeah. Are we ready to... Are we ready? To sure. All right. If we gotta, you know? Yeah. Well, let's let's just hang on. Let's hang on the fun times for just a quick second. Lottie says, uh, I'll be pushing. Don't worry. I'll say, we'll say this. Uh, They're really on the right track, so they have the best chance, but damn, is the com- competition fierce? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We We've been touting it for fucking... What? three events now it really is really what it feels like where it it truly does feel like five teams can fight for the top spot and as we've seen throughout all the events this year it's never 
I mean, besides Charlotte and now, like it's it was never the same team winning each event, you know? So it's it, oh my god. It there truly is nothing better than having the competition be as fierce as it is. Because we've been saying it for years now, right? Is that all we want is for all these teams to be fighting for first. Because all that's gonna do is make things way more enjoyable to watch as a spectator. And and way more frightening. Because the team that you want to win, and they go to a game five or a game seven, and you're like, oh, why can't we just close this fucker out? You know? So it oh my God. It's it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Holy shit. Eli, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the live show. Um Okay. Lottie with the primer. You get a woo! Thank you so much, Lottie. Yeah. Appreciate you. <laughs> As thank always. You. As always. Oh my God. Lottie says it's nuts. Every event, my research expertise is just blown out of the water. Hey, Lottie, you know a lot more about this shit than we do. I just shout into a microphone, but I can promise you this. No one's predictions are probably more wrong than mine. Okay. So don't worry. Like you can hang your hat knowing that your predictions are not as bad as mine. Okay. Because mine are fucking awful. <laughs> We, we never get them right over we here. We never it's, do. You you can look at like the grand scheme of things and you can look at the landscape and be like, oh, it makes sense that this would be this or this team would get this placing. This series would go this way. And no, it's just fucking Halo. You have no idea what's going to happen. You know? Well, you get Navi taken first and then all the teams are stacked on one side of yeah. the bracket. And who who could have predicted that shit? No, no and one. Then- no one predicted Navi getting first in their pool. Congratulations for them for doing it. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. who fucking cares about tiebreakers? The fact is they got first in that pool, plain and simple. It's just it's nobody could have predicted that. It's just crazy. God, I love competitive Halo so much. It's so fucking awesome. <sighs> You know what's not awesome, Will? Oh, are you, what? Yeah, now we're going to get into some serious shit, and I apologize, everybody, but we have to get to our topic, which is not awesome at all. We're going to talk about the magic situation. Um, I already gave my kind of preamble before, like, at the start of the episode, so I'm going to leave that at that. <sighs> okay, for those who don't know... What's up, Louie? Welcome back. It's good to see you. Um, for those who don't know what happened, Magic Moonshot put out a tweet days ago, and it was regarding, and I want I want to make sure, I want to make sure that context is provided here. Magic had set up a ladies only scrim in her private discord server. Okay. I say private is in, it was, it's hers. It's her discord server. Okay. I'm just trying to provide context here. Okay. Magic was creating a ladies only scrim in her discord server. Okay. Then she put this tweet out. I'm building out channels in my discord for the ladies scrim on Saturday. I love and value all people. And as a Christian, I believe God created people in his image as male and female. Genesis 5, colon 1-2, therefore, I will not be allowing trans players to, to, to participate. When that tweet came out, I remember, like I'm on Twitter, I'm, not, I'm never going to call it X. I'm on Twitter almost all day, every day. I know it's bad for you. Like I know social media is not a great thing, but you know, for the show purposes, I got to make sure we're keeping up on everything and anything and everything going on in the scene. When I saw that tweet, my initial reaction was, and I'm not joking when I say this, I'm going to screenshot this because this is a, you look at that tweet and I'm going to delete this in five seconds because I realized I shouldn't have tweeted this tweet. That is what I thought immediately when I saw it. So I screenshotted it and I waited for the, what I thought to be the inevitable deletion of the tweet, but it stayed up and it's still up. 
because these are her beliefs. These are her Christian beliefs. The amount of backlash, along with some support, there was absolutely some support on her tweet, but the amount of backlash that that she received was unbelievable. And I think justifiably it was received. I think, I think the backlash was justifiable, but I want to make sure that people understand this. While I don't agree with her at all. And while I think it is a stupid, yes, I will say stupid decision to hide behind your beliefs to be ignorant because that's what I believe she's being is ignorant. I believe she's being picky choosy with the things that she believes from the Bible to, to hone in her beliefs of what's going on. Okay. I think she's completely being, being ignorant of the situation. But the one thing that I will not stand for is attacks towards her for the way that she was thinking about it. What I mean by that is personal threats, anything to have to do with that. Threats towards her, threats towards her family, anything like that. Don't stand for that. Because I need people to understand here. It just makes us as bad as those that are doing the same thing towards other other marginalized groups. Okay? As a collective, everybody needs to do better. Plain and simple. But I do think her statement was fucking stupid because, and this is why I say that we, I want to be honest with everybody on the show. I don't care if you agree or disagree with me. I'm just going to be honest with you and hear my thoughts on the matter. When she says, I love and value all people, clearly you don't. And as a Christian, I believe God created people in his image as male and female. Okay, that's your belief. And you use one very specific item from the Bible when there are other things that clearly... I need to make another preface here. And I'm sorry, Will, for fucking blabbering on and on and on. Go for it, man. Um, I was born and raised Catholic um, in my side of the world. I was born and raised Catholic. I got away from it as soon as I possibly could. It wasn't for me. It, it plain and simple wasn't for me. The church life wasn't for me. I respect anybody and everybody that goes to church every Sunday. You do you. That's perfectly fine. My only request is that you don't try to force it upon me and upon others. That's all I request. Okay. Keep your beliefs to yourself. Okay. Congregate with, with the, with the people that believe the same stuff as you, I guess, because that's what fucking you do at congregations and shit. I don't care. It's not for me. Just don't force it upon me. I had a college roommate try to force it upon me. It's not a fun experience. And when you respectfully tell that individual no multiple times and they keep coming, you know, it just leaves a poor taste in your mouth. You know, I don't want that. I'm good without it. You do you, I'll do me. Everything's fine. Cool? Cool. So when she is picky choosy with a verse from the Bible, and then as somebody who's not Christian and not Catholic, to go into the replies and see many other individuals reply with, you're being very picky choosy on this. Here are other passages from the Bible that completely contradict what you were saying. So why are you being picky choosy on this? It irritates the shit out of me. You know what I mean? And my, so I released a statement on behalf of pro talk when this came out and ba- like the beginning of it was, I'm not going to read it. I don't need to read it. But basically at the beginning of it, uh, I said, this could have remained private. The reason why you're gaining a lot of backlash on this, and again, I think justifiably so, as long as it's respective, is that you made this shit public when it didn't need to be. It is your private Discord server. You can do with it what you want. I'm not saying you can't. And people who are saying that you can't, those people I believe are wrong. It's your Discord server. You can do what you want. Do I think what you're doing is wrong? Yes. But can you do it? Yeah. It's your Discord server. Not going to take that away from you. Same same reason why I said nobody should be nobody should be trying to take away Halo from you either or video games. That's why Halo is for everyone. Video games are for everyone. Plain and simple. Just leave your beliefs to yourself. 
your statement could have remained private. You never had to come on Twitter to send this out. When I think Oath asked, shouldn't this have remained private? And her res- and Magic's response was, it was gaining traction on Twitter, so I thought I'd post it on the same platform. It's a scrim in your Discord server. Leave it there. Leave it there. Like, okay. So she releases her statement. All that comes out. She has some, like, she has praise in the replies. She has a lot of backlash in the replies. Then she was subsequently dropped from LVT, and LVT released the following statement. LVT Halo will not be contracting Magic Moonshot indefinitely. We at LVT Halo believe that Halo is an inclusive place. Halo is for everyone. Couldn't agree more. Then she was also dropped from status quo and status quo made the following statement. Last month marked Magic Moonshot's last month under contract with status quo for her trial period. We were in discussion to resign, but in light of current matters, we are ending discussions. We'll wait to see if there's a follow-up from Magic to recent matters before even restarting conversations with Magic. We hope this is a, uh, we hope this to be a misunderstanding as Magic has been nothing but amazing for status quo as a whole. Fun fact, wasn't a misunderstanding. You'll find that out shortly. Status quo from its very inception has been a place of of inclusion and diversity. We're all deeply saddened by the current situation and do not condone what has been said. There will absolutely be no tolerance for hatred or discrimination within the gaming community. Differences and opinions will always be a factor in many of our life obstacles, but at status quo, we hope to give everyone a safe space to fall back to. Halo is for everyone. She was then dropped from uh, Advanced GG, one of her sponsors, and uh, in a reply to an individual, Advanced stated, thanks for reaching out. This person's values do not align with our own, and we have terminated our relationship with them. Um, Meowis, I don't know, to be completely honest with you. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the live show. I don't, I don't know. And frankly, I don't care because it shouldn't have been said on Twitter anyway, in my opinion, in my opinion, it's all, it's my opinion. In my opinion, could very well be wrong, but I just, I don't think she need to fucking say it in the first place on Twitter. Keep it private. Then she was also dropped from gamers advantage, her other sponsor. And in a reply, they said, hey, she's no longer partnered with us. And then they released another statement that said, to be clear, we stand for inclusion. If you're a member of the LGBTQIA plus community, you can join us. If you're religious, you can join us. If you're a giraffe, you may have to crouch a bit so we can hear you, but you can join our community. Everyone, and we mean everyone, is welcome. However, the one thing that we do not con- uh, is, con- the only thing we do is, con- uh, wait, the only thing we don't do is condone hate in any form. We're all part of the same gaming community, so let's stay supportive. Agreed. And then there were tons and tons and tons and tons of other responses. Uh, one I wanted to highlight here was from... Um, it's not, this isn't a joking matter, so I'm not even going to press the button, but this is from Unishek. And he says, the best way to show that you love and value everyone is to be as inclusive and inviting as possible, no matter what their background may be. To that point, I assure you that ostracizing an already underrepresented group is not the right way to go about building a healthy community. The world is already too quick to block out people because of differences. If we want to help change that, then we should all strive to be more welcoming whenever we can. Alongside so many caring people who've already replied, I strongly encourage you to listen to those sharing their experiences, reflect, and reconsider this approach. And then, like I said, there's tons and tons and tons of responses on that tweet. Lottie also put out a phenomenal statement as well. Um, Tony... Why not be reckless, put out a video. And um, he also comes from a religious background. And I thought that his statement was great. And I included, uh, so if if people are looking at the show notes right now, um, I include a PDF copy of everything that we're talking about. So I'm literally going to be reading, I'm reading from that. So if you're looking at the show notes or if you're checking out the audio version of the YouTube ver- version of the show, the show notes are in the description. Um, a PDF is, is included. You can check all the information that we're talking about, including a link to why not's video. So go check that out. Bunk God. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the live show. So, like I said, please check out Tony's video. I think he did a great job about it. Um, I even watched it twice because I just, I wanted to make sure I was hearing everything he was saying. 
Um, but yeah, go check that out. Now we're going to shift gears a second. Um, oh, contrarian. Don't worry. We're going to talk about that too, because I am mad about that. Um, okay. I want to shift gears a little bit and I want to look towards LVT for a second. As I said, with our show, want to be honest with everybody. And there is something that definitely rubs me the wrong way. Let's talk about Nighty Night. Originally, Nighty Night retweeted Magic's original tweet. Okay. Then, um, he proceeded to like additional of her tweets and responses that she'd given after that initial tweet came out. Once LVT put their statement out, once LVT put their statement out, Nighty did a complete 180, removed the retweet of the original tweet, still has some of the tweets liked for right now, if I'm not mistaken, and then proceeded to retweet and like a bunch of the other responses that was like in support of the trans community. Okay. So just did a complete about face. And then from what I'm seeing as well, is that anybody that's asking him about why he did that, he's banning them. Like they'll reach out in a DM or they'll at him on Twitter and he'll proceed to just ban them. Now, I do not, I want to make sure there's context here. I do not know if the folks that were reaching out to him and he was blocking were being assholes to him. Okay. I don't know. All I know is that to me personally, it's not a good look in my opinion for an individual who is in a leadership role of the organization and then doing a complete 180. Once LVT puts their statement out. And this, I don't know if this necessarily matters in the grand scheme of things, but it, it is, I think worthy to note that he had never provided a, a, a response to what he was doing or B, a statement in terms of like support of the trans community. Again, not, it might not necessarily matter in the grand scheme of things, but when that initial retweet came out, I'm like, Oh, that's not, that's not a good look. And the other thing too, here's, here's the thing that, here's the thing that irritates me too, is that I see people are being like retweets are not endorsements. You clearly liked what the person said. You had to have read what the person said. This doesn't just go for 90. This goes for everybody. Like when you read the tweet, you read, you read the tweet. And if you like what that person said, then you like it and or retweet it. So I don't want to hear people say, oh, it's not endorsement. You who fucking cares. You liked the shit in the first place. You are endorsing it in some capacity. Okay. LVT says everything you were referring to in the blocking matters was 90s personal. I understand. I understand. But like I said, in my opinion, it's not a good look when somebody in a leadership role of your organization does that in terms of the retweeting of magic's original post. And then does an about face as soon as you guys release a statement, a correct statement, in my opinion. And then Anybody and everybody that reaches out to him, I don't know if they're in a douchey way or not, but from what I've heard and from what I've seen, and I haven't personally reached out because I don't want to get panned, <laughs> but it, it appears as though people that are reaching out to him, whether it be adding him on Twitter or DMing him on Twitter, or just he's just blocking them. And frankly, I would just like some sort of clarification. So that's my thought on that. Agreed, Lottie. Agreed. 
And now I want to get back to the good part just for a second. PD with the gifted sub, you get a woo! Thank you so much for the gifted sub. Will, go ahead. Well, uh, well, I'm sorry. You put your finger up. I thought I, I didn't know it was in re reference to the sub woo. I, I thought you wanted to say something. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, keep going, man. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I like, Wait, what, what, am I, what am I supposed to say here? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, okay. So let's go back to the magic situation. Just, just real quick. Nighty, I hope you release a statement of some kind. Like I said, the reason why I didn't personally reach out to you, if you even fucking hear this, is that I just didn't want to get blocked by you for asking a simple question because that's what it appears you're doing. If I'm wrong, then clarify. Say something. Thank you. So, let's go back to the magic situation here. I want you guys to do me a favor. And I sincerely mean this. I want everybody to do me a favor right now. If you're watching live, obviously keep us up in a separate tab. Hey, <laughs> hey. If you're listening to the audio version of the show or the YouTube version and you have a second and you're not busy with something, I want you to do something for me right now. I want you to look up who the quartering is. I want you to look them up. While you're doing that, I want to explain to you who he is. Yeah, Crunk. Uh-oh is right. Who is the quartering? This is a statement from a fucking YouTube wiki of all places, but I think this perfectly encapsulates who this individual is. Jeremy Hambly, the quartering himself, is an obnoxious person, a double hypocrite, a manipulator, a cowardly bigot, a misogynist, as well as being anti-LGBTQ, IA+. An immature dick, an anti-SGW, an asshole, a liar, a person who masquerades most of his videos as satire, a Nazi sympathizer, and he's also a guy who had harassed a female cosplayer at a Magic the Gathering event. He's an awful fucking person. He's an awful fucking person. Now, you may be asking yourself, why the fuck is he coming into this conversation? What does he have anything to do with this? This is about not allowing trans individuals for playing in a scrim in Magic Discord. What does the quartering have to do with this? Well, I'm glad you asked because... He retweeted Magic's original tweet and said, both Gamer Advantage and Advanced GG dropped this female for saying this. I guess we'll have to make a video because of fucking course you do, you idiot. But it didn't stop there. Magic replied to him and said, if you would like a statement, I can be reached via DM or email. Magic, I don't know if you're ever going to listen to this or see this. And frankly, you may not know or have known about who he is when you made your reply. I cannot believe I'm going to say this right now. I cannot believe I'm saying this right now. But... I wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt when you replied to him thinking personally that you didn't know who he was. I just, you know, But the fact that you replied to somebody else as well saying that 
Well, I, that you were, wanted to be available if you wanted a statement. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? All you had to do. All you had to do. Was just look them up. That's all you had to do. And I still don't know if you have or have not looked him up, but you, the replies to your reply said everything I needed to see, like said everything I needed to see where they all told you who he was. Magic for the love of God, feel free to follow your belief and whatnot in God and the specific Bible verses that you choose to follow, so on and so forth. Feel free to do whatever with that. But f- fuck, oh my God. <laughs> that is somebody who you should not want to be involved with. I can't, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't fucking believe it. When I saw that reply, I, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, he, I think he just went to the bathroom, Ricky. I think he just went to the bathroom. And then I want to take things just a slight step further. I want to take things just a slight step further. And again, Again, I, I don't care if I make enemies this episode. I really don't give a shit because I this needs to be said in my opinion. This needs to be said in my opinion. Magic was also in favor of Roe v. Wade being overturned. And I didn't initially see that reply when that happened. I did not initially see that reply. Um, And then somebody from the uh, Halo community pointed that out. And I saw that initial reply and I'm like, oh, no. Oh no, because I have a four-year-old daughter. I have a little four-year-old. She's amazing. She can be an asshole. Don't get me wrong, but she's, she's amazing. And I'll never forget the feeling I had. I'll never forget the feeling I had when I dropped her off at daycare that morning. And then I picked her up later that day because during that day, Roe v. Wade was overturned. And I'll never forget the feeling I had where when I was going to pick her up, when I was going to pick her up after daycare, the only thought in my head was, wow, I literally did just drop my kid off at daycare with more rights than than she had when I picked her up. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And it still sticks in the back of my mind. It still sticks in the back of my mind because I don't care if people hate getting political and shit, but this is very, very important to me, to me personally. The folks that shout about freedom and about the wonder of America and being free and being able to make your own decisions They're really allowing women to make their own decisions about their body. Doesn't fucking sound like it. It sounds like they want people to be free when it's convenient for them to be able to make choices when it's convenient for them. That day when Roe v. Wade was overturned, my daughter left daycare with less rights than when she entered daycare that day. And magic supports it. Let's get back to the uh, to the Discord thing, though. So all this happened, right? All this was happening. She puts out that initial statement. She gets some praise. Obviously, there are folks in her corner. She gets a lot of backlash. There's a lot of people not in her corner on this. All this happens. 
She loses sponsorships. She's no longer part of the organizations that she was a part of. Appreciate you, Lottie. And everybody that is here who's being respectful, everybody that's here that's being respectful, thank you for doing so. Appreciate it as always. Then she doubled down. So she comes out. So I'm thinking to myself, maybe, just maybe, maybe, just maybe, she will hear from people, respectful people, She'll hear from respectful people and she will be educated in a sense. Right? Maybe she'll be educated in a sense. Maybe she'll gain a different viewpoint or just understand the different viewpoint and come back with an apology of some kind of an additional statement of some kind to potentially clarify. I don't think it would have done any good, but regardless. But no... No, no, that's not what happened. She doubled the fuck down hard. She released four tweets in the style of a notepad. And I'm going to read them and fucking hate myself for doing so. But here we go. It has been quite the ride over the past 48 hours. I wanted to make this post because I've been asked by many to clarify my position. I'll do my very best to speak with honesty from the heart. I have nothing but love for all people. Again, doesn't fucking sound like it magic, but okay. Yesterday and today I was able to have several open conversations over phone calls, discords, and DMs with people from all walks of life and points of view. That's great. That is great. As per their advice, I will do my best to clear, to clearly communicate my perspective. Okay. Okay. We're off to a semi-decent start here. I have worked on hundreds of events that were open to all people and plan to do many more. My goal with the ladies scrim event was to create a space for biological women to compete in Halo as something supplementary to open competitions, not in replacement of other platforms for Halo competition. When I started building out a section of my discord for these women's scrims, I created a category and wall called lady Spartans. This is when I made the decision to host the event for biological women only. As a Christian, here we go. I believe that God designs his creation with an assigned gender, either male or female. I believe that every person has value and I have no issue interacting, gaming, speaking, etc., with transgender people. I also acknowledge that every person has the right to make choices for themselves. Because of my beliefs, I felt it was dishonest for me to put the Discord tag Lady Spartan on a person that isn't a biological woman. For the several women's events across multiple titles that I worked on as either a caster, organizer, or consultant, I have never tried to tell these groups who to include. In fact, I never even brought up the topic of, trans of transgender women. I'm not trying to convince people to believe the way that I do, but when it comes to my personal discord, I needed to stay true to what I believe to be right. And again, rewinding all the way back, that's why I wanted to make sure to clarify here, while I still believe she is wrong, this is me, Josh, speaking, while I still believe personally that she is wrong, this was her Discord server. Okay? The groups I previously worked with, both brand partnerships and organizations, were all open contracts where either party could walk away for any reason. I enjoyed my time working with each group and I appreciate the people involved. Even though I disagree with their decisions, I hold no ill will toward any of them. If you've read this far, thank you for hearing me out. I want to especially thank the many people who checked up on me in the last two days, both people who agree with my perspective and friends who disagree but respect my right to hold to my own beliefs. I especially want to thank the many Christians who offered scriptures of encouragement and prayers. Were they scriptures and prayers that only aligned with your beliefs? Or were they scriptures and prayers that, you know didn't. I don't know where I go from here, but I, if I have to leave the gaming space behind, I'm willing to do that. But if God gives me a path forward in this space, I will follow it. Game on, be the light, onward and upward, magic moonshot. Okay. And then, in a reply, in a reply to an individual, she said that I don't personally know of any transgender female to male Halo players, but I would also have included them on the basis of being biological women. So 
So it's only certain trans people that aren't allowed. Not all. Just a marginalized group of an already marginalized group. That's not allowed. Got it. Got it. So now, the last thing that I have here, something semi-recent, was from um, Jess. She goes by Active Vision over on Twitter. She actually did. She was one of the individuals that had a conversation with Magic. And she is also transgender. So I thought it'd be relevant to include this information. So after Magic puts out her statement, her doubling down statement as it was, Jess quote tweeted it with the following. My reaction to this statement. After reading this thread, did she say these things in our conversation? Absolutely. I'm glad that she was mostly honest from this. We spoke about this, but failed to say some of the things we talked about, which I'll be talking about below. There are a few issues in her statement that she fails to say, why make a space for biological women? She does state that she feels uncomfortable for putting a tag on trans women, which is true and her own belief. But if you do not have a problem with trans women, why do this? I will bring up now, since she made one mistake with this statement that she clearly has missed. She forgot to point out that she feels threatened by transgender women in the gaming space for the advantages that she thinks we have against women. She has also told me directly that she feels uncomfortable even being around trans women. She did mention to me that she does not feel comfortable with using the restroom with me, even though we use the same restroom during GCX. My last thing is why make a scrim for ladies that was for fun, which did not include any money and did not include trans women. If it is for fun, why could you still not include us? She thought we had an advantage. I feel like this completely was missed. This needed to be said. Inclusivity is a big thing right now against trans people. We're getting left out of everything. We want to live happy and free. Please learn from this as clearly missed the in the as clearly missed the point on your follow-up statement. And then adding to that statement, she said, an apology to everyone would have been a nice thing. She decided to put her faith as an excuse for this, which is not acceptable. Beige, that's I'm surprised it wasn't already understood that I am a progressive individual. That, again, I, I don't fucking care about people not liking this at all. I'm just going to say my piece. The thing that I find funny about putting labels on these things, uh, about like political viewpoints, think of the word progressive, right? When I think of the word progressive, I think of progressing towards something greater. Like that's, that's genuinely what I think when I, when I hear the word progressive, I don't think of a woke agenda or any stupid fucking shit about that. Are you kidding me? When I think of progressive, I think that you want to progress the country, the world people to be better than it already is. That's, that's truly what I believe. Okay. And beige, I don't want you like that's not an attack towards you. Like I just I want I just want people to understand that's my viewpoint. So yes, I could be cons- I am considered a progressive individual, but when I think of progressive, I think of it as a normal fucking human being who wants people in the world to be better. That's literally what I want. That's it. That's fucking it. You know what I mean? It's crazy. <laughs> oh my god. And you have other folks who want to ban books and burn books. Like, are you fucking kidding me? This isn't a political podcast. I just want to make sure that my point was known there. Jesus fucking Christ. Can you tell I'm not religious? By the way, I use God's name in vain all the fucking time. God damn it. All right. So again, just to make sure that it is fully understood right now at this point in time. Halo is for everyone. Okay. Magic can still play Halo. No one's taking that away. And anybody that wants to take that away is also, guys, I'm sorry, a fucking idiot. Plain and simple. Okay. Halo's for everyone. Video games are for everyone. Do I think her views are justified? 
she's going to believe whatever the fuck she wants to believe. I think she's wrong. Plain and simple, I think she's fucking wrong. I think she's ignorant. I think that she wants to hear what she wants to hear. And she's finding scriptures in the Bible to vindicate that. Like, that's truly what I think. That is what I believe. Anybody and everybody is welcome here. Do not throw your religious beliefs on me. Don't do it. Okay? Leave it alone. If you want to be, if you have your faith, that's awesome. I'm ne- I never want to take your faith away from you. I never do. I want you to full wholeheartedly follow your faith as long as long as it's not hurting or discriminating against others. Then fucking go for it. It's all you. Go for it. But man, was that a fucking stupid statement. And the doubling down and the reply to the quartering. Are you fucking kidding me? Magic, every interaction with you that I've had in a, at a personal level, face-to-face at events has been great, has been amazing. I've never had a bad experience talking to you. Never have. Frankly, I don't think I ever will. Because you, we obviously understand that we uh, disagree on, I disagree on your beliefs, you disagree on what I'm saying right now. Okay, that's understood. But, man, I can not fucking believe this. I, I, uh, no, JRD, no, I don't. Oh, fucking, no. I think it depends on how much practice you put in, how much time you put in. No, oh my God. I, it's literally like, don't know. I want to read what Lottie said here. Lottie said, the uh, Lottie said, just so everyone is aware, it's such a big deal for this particular person uh, because she has a platform She was growing in the Halo community as a bright future, as a role model, and discrimination is not something to be idolized or followed. Agreed. Agreed. Fuck yeah, milkshake. Fuck yeah, milkshake. That's exactly it, man. If you're religious and you have your beliefs, that's awesome. That's fucking awesome. You, you have something to like on one hand. And yes, I'll say this on one hand. I do semi envy those that do have a belief in a higher being. Because frankly, as of right now, based off of what I've researched in my, like my personal thoughts, I don't as of right now, I don't, my wife does my life. My wife believes in a higher being and that's great. And I want my daughter to be able to pick her own path. You know, we agree on that. That's that's why we work so well together is that we we both agree that we want our daughter to make her own path. We're not forcing anything upon her. We want her to learn as she grows. And if she if she hears something or sees something that she wants to know more about, then I want to be there for her to learn more about it. And then I can educate myself further as well. But I've just learned growing up is that religion as of right now is just not for me. I've had to try to be force fed down my throat. I don't like it. It's not fucking fun. So it's just, like I said, I just, I, everything that I think about now, everything that I think about now, well, not everything, but a lot of the things I think about now is the context of my kid. What I want for her when she grows up. And I want her to be able to make her own decisions. I want her to be able to make her own decisions about her body. Bring it back to the Roe v. Wade thing. It's it's like, it's just. 
It's just crazy, man. It's just fucking crazy. Will, I talked a long time. Is there anything you wanted to add? I don't think there's anything else left for me to add. All right. I think you hit, you hit everything you <laughs> needed to hit. Um, like I said, if anybody wants a PDF copy of everything that we discussed during this topic, it's in the show notes of the show. Feel free to check it out. If you're any at all interested, it'll always be there as long as the show notes exist. Um, contrarian. Yep. You were right. You were right. Like I said, it's, it's hilarious to me. It's hilarious to me that there are, that there are a subset of individuals out there who, who tout over and over again. You'll notice how I'm trying not to put an, or an umbrella label on them, but there is a subset of group of people out there in the world who always tout freedom and always tout you should be able to like, you should be free. You should be able to do what you want, make your own decisions, but it's only when it benefits them. It's only when it benefits them. Just remember that. Jesus fucking Christ. To put a final statement on this, Magic, I don't know if it's any at all possible, but next time, obviously you have people in your corner. There are people that believe the same way you do. There's people that believe the same way we do. There's people that believe blah, 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 blah. It's the way the world is. All I hope for the future is that keep your fucking beliefs to yourself. That's all I ask. You don't need to take my advice. God knows you fucking haven't already. Just leave beliefs out of it, man. Shit. Let's move to some regular news. Hispanic Heritage Month nameplate and emblem in MCC and Infinite by 343. They state, Hispanic Heritage Month from the 15th of September to the 15th of October is a celebration of the culture of Hispanic people worldwide. We're proud to celebrate with our community across the globe during this month. Log into Halo Infinite and MCC this month to unlock the uh, His Hispanic Heritage Month nameplate and emblem. Words are hard. Please bear with me. And then Halo Infinite Infection Intel by 343. I'm not going to read through it, but feel free to if you are any at all interested. That's it for the regular news. We don't have any Connor games watched, so now it's time for Will's Adventures with a Nail Over. Some other games too. Will, what'd you play last week? Oh, still playing Halo Infinite. Obviously, we had the HRL match, um, which I'll let you go into detail on. And then uh, <laughs> just been grinding. Uh, played a couple nights ago with Joey, buddy of ours. Um, we went 13 and seven on the night. We got 20 matches in. It was a session. It felt like a session, at least for us. Damn. Uh, probably not compared to like uh, snake bite grand. Well, <laughs> there's a day over there, but um, we went 13 and seven. Two of those losses were from quit outs. So I counted as 13 and five. And uh, one of the wins we it was a slayer on live fire. And I believe we dropped a player. So we were three V four and we pulled out the win like 50 to like 42 or something like that. It was insane. But uh, it was, it was, it's just been a lot of fun. Uh, grinding the games away. Uh, I've been getting a lot of solitude. I've noticed that, um, a lot of solitude in the rotation and I'm just getting a little bored of it because it came up like once every three maps for us when we were playing. Fuck. Um, do you like yeah. solitude? Do you like playing solitude that much? Not anymore. I used to. <laughs> no, it's just been like, come on, this again. <laughs> I also never liked uh, Plaza, so I mean, I'm 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 one of those people, you know. Sure, sure. Um, and then playing some Starfield as well. Um, 
I won't say anything about the mission, but I finished the Crix Legacy quest line. Um, came to a great ending. You had a choice in the matter. It wasn't predetermined for you, which is always great in video games, like these RPGs where you feel like you make an impact. Mm -hmm. And um, man, I grinded out that quest line and now I finished it and I'm like, I don't know what I feel like doing now. I have this whole universe in front of me and I'm like, what, what do I do? Sure. <laughs> oh, that's, that's all I've played though, Josh. What about yourself? Well, you're right. Well, we did have our HRL matches and uh, as a result, we are 2-0 and in series count and we're 6-0 and in map count. We're currently undefeated. Uh, that very well could change this week. Because yeah, we play another uh, undefeated team this week. So we do. I think this might be for first place. All right. Well, we're going to have to bring our A game, and uh, I think we got it. So, yeah. All right. It's 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 going great. We're gelling as a team. Um, we're making sure we're having each other's backs. We're calling things out appropriately, and we talk about games after they're concluded as to what we can do better, and we improve for the next one. So it just it always works out. Um. I've also, well, I'll just quickly say I, I started playing sea of sea of stars again. And, yeah. uh, I'm a little bit further in that. I still fucking love it. I know Riz is enjoying the shit out of it as well. Um, so yeah, if you have not played sea of stars, it's on game pass and on PlayStation plus, this is not an ad. It's just a game I've been following for many years. It's finally out. Uh, I highly recommend people play it because it's fucking great. And the music is phenomenal as well. It's awesome. And then, uh, yes, I'm also playing Starfield. Well, I have not stopped playing Starfield. I've played a lot of Starfield. And I have one more... Um, I have one more faction quest line that I'm working on right now, which is the UC. Um, so I'm just going to be working my way through that, and then I'm just going to be focusing on exploring because, like I said, this is my new Game Plus run. Um, no spoilers or anything like that. And I will say that when we finally are going to talk about spoilers, um, whenever that, whenever we decide that, that, uh, that like tape can be lifted and we can finally start talking about spoilers. I've been like keeping notes as to weird and funny things that have happened while I've been playing. Oh, and, yeah. um, one of the, one of the factions, one of the factions in the game, I'm not going to say which one, because I literally don't want to spoil anything. One of the factions in the game, the final quest of that faction, um, I, just to test the game's limits, I want, I just decided to try something completely like fucking bonkers to see if it would work. And, uh, it worked and I fucking couldn't believe oh, no. it. Like I went to go turn in the quest after, after it said I was done and just the way that people didn't react was incredible. The way okay. that people didn't react was incredible. So I, like I said, when we're able to finally talk about spoilers for this game, we're going to give it a little bit of time. When we're finally able to talk about, it, I cannot wait to share that dumbass fucking story because it's, it's why I love these types of games. Um, it, it's just plain and simple. It's fucking Starfield's fucking awesome. Um, when when is the time where we can lift that spoiler tape? You know, like like you said. Oh, that's. I mean, that's oh, that's a genuine good. It's question. such. It's tough on this one because it's such an expansive game. It yes. can take someone forever to get through it. I. You know what I'm gonna say, genuinely, and chat. Like, if you guys do not agree with this, then feel free because we we could also just leave this to uh, like an off the rails type thing too. But then we 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 should get our patrons input. But like, I'm thinking the end of this month. Like, we could say October first is when we're when we're able to talk about spoilers. Oh, well, he sniper says February. Not so, fuck you in February. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> February? Are you kidding me? Justin says no. Okay, fine. Not October then. Maybe we'll do November or something. We'll give it some time. Um, also, I want to catch up on follows real quick. I apologize for missing a lot of you guys during the topic. Um, hesitant, Meta Monkey. Um, I think I banned that one. M4. I'm, I'm not going to even try to pronounce the rest of it. 
Um, Cam Beams, Ziopal, Theatrical, JRD, and Nicolations. Thank you guys for the follows. Welcome to the live show. Apologize for missing you guys earlier. But thank you for being here. Thank you for being respectful. Oh, Milkshake, I won't talk about, like, I'm not even, like, I'm not finished with Act 1 of Baldur's Gate yet. And I'm also not looking for spoilers or anything like that. So, like, I stay away from that. CG I did. The one that I did not say I did ban. So, fuck it. Ronan, I agree. Elder Scrolls is going to be fucking awesome. At least I hope it is. I assume it is. If it's, a, it's a, if it's a fucking Bethesda game, it's going to be. All right. I followed before, but I guess I it didn't take. I've watched the show. I've watched this before a few times. Hey, Theatrical, thanks for being <laughs> here regardless. You're here now, you know? It showed up now. You're here now. That's all that matters. And then Lottie, if you're still here, I also watch walkthroughs. Um, if I'm playing the game, like for me, it, it depends on the, it depends. So like if I'm actively playing the game and do not want to see what happens further, then I will not watch a walkthrough. But like when Elden Ring came out, when Elden Ring came out, and everybody was streaming it and whatnot. Like one of my favorite, one of my favorite creators on Twitch is day nine, because I think he like the, the mindset that he brings to playing the games is, is great. He breaks things down. Um, and he's funny and it's, it's just a good time. And when he was playing Elden ring, I would, as I was playing the game, even, I don't care if I was spoiled things in Elden ring because I know that I probably wouldn't ever beat it, but, uh, I would love watching him because the way that he would like play things and then, uh, he would see something and he would call it out from like a game dev perspective and he just gets so fucking giddy. And I'm like, I love this. So yes, it just, it, I love watching walkthroughs. It depends on the type of game and whether or not I'm playing at the same time and so on and so forth. But yeah, I, I'm the same way. Uh, I've watched walkthroughs. I've watched people play other games. If I know I'm never going to play it, but want to see what the game's all about or the story. Yeah. Um, it's 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 great that you can get some of that experience without having to actually sit down and play the game yourself. If, especially if you don't have time to play the game, you can take that video on the go or wherever. Absolutely, um, Ronan. I'll take it a step further. I still do. I still buy strategy guides to this day. Physical strategy guides. I still do. Like recent ones that I got was uh, the collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom, um, and then. Uh, the Elden Ring guides parts one and two. Like I literally got the second one in the mail today and they're sitting, they're sitting in my bookshelf now. See, I still fucking do. Are you kidding me? If, if I don't even look through them, it's like, it's a night. It could be like a cool art piece to have, like with the art inside of them and whatnot. Like they're just, they're so well designed. They're so well designed. Um, sure enough. I have not seen the clip yet of Nick Chubb's injury, but uh, Will, our buddy Dom texted me and said that Nick Chubb got injured. So, oh, that's crap. very unfortunate because, I mean, that's their fucking star running back. So, sub weasel D. No, I know. I know. Sorry, Browns fans. Sorry, Browns fans. Oh, that's rough. Did you watch it? No. Oh, okay. I, I, honestly pulled up my fantasy team because I was playing against Nick, Nick Chubbs this week. Oh, <laughs> wanted to see if, um, there was a report on what happened. Cause they'll have that in the fantasy app. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, Oh, it's bad. It's bad. Oh, it's okay. bad. Yup. It's holy shit. Whoa. Whoa. Also, Lottie, I'm so sorry. I mean, I'm sorry about that week one loss. I bet fucking, I bet PJ was just loving life that day. But hey, that comeback you guys had. Granted, okay. I hope, Lottie, I know you're new to like, the, the giants in the football realm here. Can you, can you make sure that PJ is doing okay in terms of like not getting his hopes too high? 
Like they 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 reverse swept the Cardinals. You know what I mean? Like a win's a win. I'm never going to take a win away from you. Hell, the fucking Vikings are 0 2 right now. Okay, the Vikings are 0 2. I can't say shit. But you reverse I'm putting in Halo terms. You reverse swept the Cardinals. You know? So the Cardinals are not good. But hey, I'm never going to take away a win. And Danny Dimes was throwing fucking dimes all second half. Did you see the stat line, Will? I did not. Uh, Daniel Jones is the first quarterback in NFL history um, to like throw for a certain amount, rush for a certain amount, um, and like a few other stats in a second half of a game ever. Like no other quarterback in NFL history had done what he did in that second half of the game. So that's fucking rad. But it was against the Cardinals. So a win's a win. Just Lottie, make sure that PJ understands that. You know what I mean? I'm guaranteed he does. But I also know his tweets at the beginning of the season where like he was saying you guys are going to the fucking Super Bowl or some shit. And I'm like, PJ, you got to relax. Because I also thought the Vikings were going to do pretty well this season. I know it's still early. I know it's still early. Hey, we just we just stopped that turnover differential and we have a chance. Well, I mean, right? We would have won both games if we didn't turn the fucking ball over so much. I mean, let's be real about this. But a win's a win. A loss is a loss. You know, it is what it is. He was so excited. I bet he was. I bet he was. And I bet he was fucking texting Jay. Like, just. I bet he was shitting on King Jay. Like, crazy. Because for the, for folks who don't know, Jay is a, Jay's a big Vikings fan. And and uh, we're, we're not doing so hot right now, so. um, You should have heard his commentary against the Cowboys. Poor, uh, poor guy. <laughs> Oh no. Like I said, I felt when I saw the score and I saw that they were getting shut out, I'm like, Oh fuck. No, this is, this is not it because I, I like the giants eliminated us from the playoffs last year. And I, as predicted, if I don't get halo predictions, right, I'll get some football predictions, right? God damn it. And I knew we were getting eliminated immediately. I don't even, I don't care that we beat the giants in like what the last week of the regular season. I don't fucking give a shit. It was a chip shot field goal. That won the game for us. I knew for a fact we were losing the game in the playoffs. I knew it. And we did. And so I legitimately thought going into this season that you guys were just going to be better. Just overall, just be better. And then, and then game one happened. I'm like, Oh fuck. But then again, the Viking, the the, Viking, the Cowboys defense is fucking phenomenal. So I'm, you know, take that with what you will. Um, but hey, you guys dominated the Cardinals in the second half. Danny Dimes throwing dimes. So in all seriousness, I am wishing the Giants a good season because I, like, I want to see teams just do better. Same thing as Halo. We want to see teams just do better. As long as they're not in our division. Fuck you, Packers. So. That's it. Football watch party? We could do that sometime. Who knows? You guys do. We have to do a Thursday night game. Oh, yeah. You're right. We could do the HRO matches and then just jump into like a watch party for the NFL game that's going on Thursday. Um, Halt says, fuck the Packers. I've, I have no ill will towards the fucking Packers. I have Ill- As a Vikings fan, how do you not? I don't. I don't fucking care about those petty ass rivalries. Like the the real rivalry that isn't technically a rivalry because the Packers shit on them every time is the Packers Bears. You know what I mean? Like I don't fucking care. The, who, what I do care about is Sean Payton losing because I hate him. Like he was the head of Bounty Gate when we had a chance to go to the Super Bowl that year. Like I don't like Sean Payton. I think he's a fine person. But like I just don't like him. I think he's cocky as shit as well. And now the Broncos are 0 2. <laughs> Fuck you. Hey, Shook, the Dolphins are good, man. As, as long as Tua stays healthy, the Dolphins are awesome. And I love Mike. I love Mike McDaniel. I fucking love Mike McDaniel as a head coach. I love him. Like, he says it how it is. He doesn't sugarcoat shit. But the best part is, he's like Bill Belichick when he doesn't sugarcoat things, but he's funny. Like, Mike McDaniel is fucking hilarious. Oh, my God. He's so funny, and he's just fucking cool. What's up, Ashley? Welcome back. 
Oh my God. Your brother's a lifelong Dolphins fan. He's finally seeing his team have a nice start. Hey, they were, I mean, they were really good at the end of last year too. It just, it, they just, Tua just seems to be healthy. As long as Tua remains healthy, I mean, shit. Sky's the limit. Oh, my God. All right. Sorry about all the football talk. Will, we'll talk about the Vikings on Off the Rails because I know you have your thoughts. So <laughs> I'm excited to hear them. Uh, Frank, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the live show. All right. Let's get to some shout outs. Happy belated birthday to Mick Wynn, Divinity, and Lady Echidna. Shout out to everyone who joined in the community play date. We add all in one, Blackout, Danny Phantom, D Pancakes, Elated Dartboard, Game Crazy John, Goalie Sniper, Carnage, Overkill, Rasta Monkey Jr., Riznak, Shot, Snagu, Spice Mega Kills, and William Star Winder. Thank you guys for joining up in the play date. Hope it was a fucking fun time. Justin, you dug your own grave with that one, bud. Welcome to being a Vikings fan. <laughs> Will knows it far too well. I came in a few years ago or whatever, and Justin's brand new. Welcome to the shit show. What, 25 years and counting as a Vikings fan and being disappointed. It's true. It's true. Get ready. You like that? No, I don't like that, Kirk. I don't fucking like it. Shout out to everyone who followed and subbed during the live show. Give me one second here. Do, 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 do. Chauncey, Wildcan Joker, Syrian, uh, Joe, Eli, Meow, Bunk God, Hesitant, Meta Monkey, M4, Cam Beans, Zeopal, Theatrical, JRD, Nicolations, and Frank. Thank you guys for the follows. Greatly appreciated. And then to Captain Mo, Barnaby Jones. Well, actually, Captain Mo with the sub for the five monther. Barnaby Jones with the five gifted. <laughs> Lottie with the primer. PD with the one gifted. Thank you guys for the subs. You all get a woo! Greatly appreciated as always. Ashley, yes, go horns. Um, Funny college football story. I never paid much to call pay, paid much attention to college football until my brother actually lived in Texas for a little bit while his wife was uh, basically in basic training on the army base there. And he became a Longhorns fan. He sent me like a hat and a sweater. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm watching the Longhorns now. And that was the year uh, Vince Young was the quarterback against um USC, I forget the name of the running back that was supposed to be the next great thing. And um, Vince Young won. Reggie Bush, yes, thank you. Um, Vince Young won the, the national championship, and I just was like ecstatic. Been a Longhorns fan ever since. Uh, Sorry to derail that there. <laughs> no, no, you're fucking, you're great, but you're wrong on following that team. We should be following USC, Will, because what are we doing right now? We're tanking for uh, Caleb dang. Williams. Yes, Vikings, lose all of your games yep. this year and draft a quarterback that can maybe get us somewhere. We're tanking <laughs> for Caleb Williams, ladies and gentlemen. Fuck all the other teams. Here we go, baby. 0-17, let's get it. Please. Kirk's a free agent next year. Not re-signing his ass. You better fucking not, Vikings. Fuck. Because then, think about it. Like, we tank, we get Caleb, we sign Justin for a shit ton of money. And you have that money of, uh, available because you're bringing in a rookie quarterback on a rookie deal. Yes! Minnesota needs defense. I'm going to say this about the defense real quick, showing off because you've said a few things here. We are a new defense under a new coordinator, new scheme, new plans. They are playing exceptionally well for what they've been giving. They understand the defense. Now it's about getting to that point of executing to 100%. Um, and stopping the are, run. 
We are bad, but we are better than we were last year. And that, <laughs> so that gives me a little bit of hope that we could do something. All right. The fact that that's saying something is sad, but yes, like I, I have faith in Brian Flores. Um, we know what the Dolphins defense was with him on there. Uh, so I, I just like, yes, I heard about the Baker Mayfield, like understanding our signals and blah, 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 which if true, that fucking blows. And I mean, shit, we saw the Eagles literally run all over us. Um, but if we can shore up that run defense and we can stop these fucking turnovers, we can actually win a game. And that's the thing. We just need to win a game. Like I, I'm not thinking about, Oh, we're going to the super bowl or any shit like that. We just need to win a fucking game. Then we can start going in the right direction. That's all we need to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying it's still early. Yes. Like, Yes, it is. There's a, we could we could get back on the tracks and have a decent record and maybe make the playoffs. I mean, I would like that just for enjoyment of the season. But also, if we're bad for a season to get a number one quarterback, I'll, I'll take that. I highly doubt it's going to happen, right? Like, oh, there's yeah. other teams that are worse off than the Vikings right now. So if anything, we'll just we go, see where everything shakes out. If anything, we go, what, eight, nine or whatever it is, or we or we go like just over 500. Like I think that's worst case scenario. We, it's been a it's been a long time since we've had an awful year. Like I'm I'm saying like truly awful year. Usually our draft picks are never high draft picks. We're never that bad. We're not like we're not fucking Browns zero and sixteen. You know what I mean? We're not we're 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 never that bad. We're if like the worst we usually do as Vikings is middle of the pack, fighting for a wild card spot. Like getting into the playoffs via the wild card, that's that's like the worst we typically do. So, if we do that, will I be upset? I won't be upset, but I'll I'll be disappointed. I'll absolutely be disappointed because I I truly thought like yes, it's still early. Will you're correct? You're one thousand percent right. Where it's still early. Like I just when I look at the Vikings this year, I thought that with Brian Flores as the defensive coordinator. Um, uh, with our head coach in his second year, uh, with getting Addison in the draft as a great wide receiver prospect, having a true one, two in Justin Jefferson and Addison getting rid of Dalvin cook. Yes. That, that can suck. That can suck. But will, I know you have your thoughts about getting rid of an aging running back. And I, frankly, I agree with you. Um, so I did, I did think that like, People look at our record last year, and I truly believe that we were not as good as our record suggested. We had we had wins. We had a lot of wins. We get annihilated in the playoffs immediately. Okay? I don't think we were as good as our record suggested. But what I thought that would mean for this year is that we would take that momentum and have, quote-unquote, good wins this year. Like, good wins against good teams and actually be competitive for the playoffs. That's what I genuinely thought. I never said Super Bowl. Never thought we'd get there this year. Yeah. But just... Making some noise. That's what I expected this year. And yes, it's still early. We're 0-2. We could have easily won both of those games because the Eagles are not playing to their standard, which surprises me because I thought they would be right back in tip-top shape. And the Bucks are the Bucks. They have Baker Mayfield as their starting quarterback. And I have nothing against Baker. I think he's good. Genuinely, I think he's good. He finally has an opportunity to start. Like he is a real opportunity to be the starting quarterback. People aren't going to take that away from him. He can show people who doubt him. Here's who I am. We could have won both those games. Go ahead, Will. Could have. Uh, looking at some news I hadn't seen since, because I haven't really looked at Vikings news since uh, until since the game took place on Thursday. Yeah. Apparently, the Vikings and Jets were talking about a trade for Cousins. Well, I yeah, don't because know. it's the, a rumor. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah, rumor. Yeah. After Rodgers Not, went down. After Rodgers went down, but that says something to me. If the Vikings are actually looking at trading Kirk Cousins at the beginning of the season here, which means we are not expecting to be good. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, Zach Wilson, if we got Cousins for Zach or if they're just trading for draft picks, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want I don't... Zach Wilson. Yeah, he's awful. But that's the thing we just talked about. Oh, take him for Caleb. Caleb. Bring him over. Bring him over. Zach, <laughs> welcome. You're welcomed with open arms over on the Minnesota Vikings. We're not the Jets. 
we're not those fans. I have nothing against the fans of the Jets. They're just very passionate. Uh, we're, you know, come on over. Come on <laughs> over to our side over here, the Minnesota Vikings. Help us lose some games. And then uh, get on the bench, big boy. It's <laughs> uh, uh, Lottie, well, yeah. we, we love everything you do, too. Uh, we are going to Worlds. We'll both be there. Thanks for being here. Much appreciated. Love you, Lottie. You're incredible. Yeah. Seriously. And thank thank you for not only being here today for this episode, but uh, also being like a voice of reason in the chat as well. Um, and mm-hmm. thank you for everything that you stand for as well. Um, but like we all say, we just, we just want this place to be better. That's all we want. We want this place to be inclusive. We want this place to be better. It's literally as simple as that. And when you see things that don't align with that, you got to call shit out. You got to call it out because if we're not, if we're not calling it out, we're not doing our job. Holy shit. Oh, absolutely, Lottie. I have sticker. I have a sticker for you too. I don't care if you don't want it. I have a sticker for you too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Noom, Noomzy, and Dancing Sloth. Thank you guys for the follows. Welcome to the live show, John. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great time. Oh, Lottie, it's going to be great. It's it's a holographic sticker. I could, <laughs> I couldn't be more fucking excited. I love him so much. <laughs> Shit. Woo. Like fucking my own woo. Damn it. Oh, God damn. All right. Back to the shout outs. Will after this long ass football talk that we just went on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Um, Tangent. Hey, it's our Off show. Rails can, already. No, it's our show. We can do whatever the fuck we want. Um, shout out to everyone who's a patron at the semi-pro and higher tiers. That includes Rasta Monkey Jr., Ricky Snagu, Raider Hater, Peanut Mutt, One Swole Danny, Danny Phantom, Riz Snack, Zarners, Ami Joy, Mr. Smiley, High Tech Redneck, Goalie Sniper, The Only Neeb, Heavy Rainfall, Elated Dartboard, and Carnage. Thank you guys very much for the additional support over on the Patreon. And if you are a patron, or if you sign up, uh, we will have our patron Q&A. At the end of this month on the 29th, if I'm not mistaken, uh, after the community play date. So again, if you are a patron, make sure you get your questions submitted. If you have them, if you're not a patron and you want to sign up $5 and up tier, you get access to the Q and a, you can add your questions there. If you any, if you want to, and they don't have to be halo related, they're there for you. Will's going to shout out the Patreon later on in the show, which is actually coming up pretty soon. That's it for the shout outs. Time for some community creations, halo memes every day, reddit.com forward slash R uh, slash halo memes. I almost lost my train of fucking thought. <laughs> that was crazy. Um, give me one second here. Because clearly I missed it. What did you miss? I miss adding something to the community creations. Oh, and Lottie oh being here made me fucking remember. So thank you, Lottie. Uh, we have Forge features for September 15th, 2023 by 343. And then we have is formal the console FPS goat phases worst placement of the year. Optic win a second time. It's episode 50 of two times the grind. Nice. So make sure you check that out. I'm getting it added to the show notes literally right now. Bada bing. Bada, boom. There it is. That's all I got for the community creations. Will, that also means it's all I got for the show. If you would do me a fucking solid ass favor and plug this show. Of course. Uh, as Josh mentioned, we have our Patreon. Uh, go check it out. Different tiers, different rewards, audio show, video show, Q&A. Uh, play video games with us maybe sometimes if you're available if we're available and it all works out <laughs> go check it out uh search for us on podcast services we're pretty much on every single one out there even josh's favorite pocket cast still not that uh the social media sites twitter facebook uh, tiktok instagram we're on those again search hs pro talk if you want to catch any vods interview series any other video stuff we've done 
youtube.com slash HTS Pro Talk. If you want to watch live, go to twitch.tv slash HTS Pro Talk. Mondays, 7 p.m. Central. We're here. We're talking about Halo, of course. Come swing by. Say hi. Uh, if you go to htsprotalk.com, it'll no longer take you to htsprotalk.com, but instead, evolvedhalo.com. Your home for Halo. Sorry for the weird Discord delay, guys. Because uh, you can't forget about the fine folks over at Podcast Evolve. They have great shows, such as Podcast Evolve, Mission Debrief, Halo TV+, Plus, Book Club, Build with Blocks, Halo Headlines, and Halo Gear Guide. Go make sure to check it out. And also... I just wanted to say before we head out here and Josh closes this out, thanks to everyone in chat for keeping it civil, being genuinely great human beings, nice human beings that can have discussions like this and not blow up the chat and make me go crazy as a mod. So just want to say it's appreciated. I completely agree with what Will said. Thank you all so very much for everything. Seriously. Um, And CG, I agree. Hopefully it is in a better atmosphere. But that's the thing, guys, is that there's a reason why we talk about what we talk about in the show. Plain and simple. Sometimes we have fun times. Sometimes it's not so fun. But if we don't talk about the things that are going on, good or bad, then we're just being ignorant to the entire situation too. And I won't stand for that. So, back to the nice part here. Ashley says, when does the new ProTalk merch come out? Is it this week? It is. It's on Wednesday, baby. It's on Wednesday. Let's go. Wednesday at noon, World's 2023 merch drops. We'll have shirts, hoodies, pants, shorts, stickers, posters, a fanny pack, because fuck Lululemon. It'll all be there. Wait, wait, I, I missed this Lululemon thing. You got to tell me where it came from. Okay. So my wife has, here's a, here's a story time for you guys. So my wife, the only piece of, I, if you have Lululemon stuff, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not throwing shade at you. Like it's fucking, it's your money. Do with it what you will. Like a lot of people love their stuff. I understand. It's, it's fine. You, you like your shit. I'm not going to criticize you for it. Um, the, there's Natana in the chat right now. She says she, she loves her bag. The one piece of Lululemon merchandise that she has is like a, um, like a shoulder, like bag that it, in all intents and purposes, it's a fanny pack. Um, but they don't call okay. it that. Okay. They don't call it that, but it's a fanny pack. Um, and so I was looking through the items that we could design on the store and a cross body bag. It's fucking excuse me. Oh Sorry, my. it's a fucking fanny pack. So, uh, there is a fanny pack on the the store, and I and I asked Natana, I'm like, you think it'd be funny if I just did this? Like, if I just designed one and put it up on the store just for just as a joke, and like in the description I could say fuck your Lululemon, and uh, and she she laughed. She's like, yeah, it'd be pretty funny. And so I literally did that. That's that. That's the whole justification. It's on the for it. site, it yes. says that. Yep, in the description of the product, it says "fuck your Lululemon bag." Buy this instead. Like, <laughs> so, oh. yeah. Oh, there you go. That uh, like I said, Wednesday, this week on Wednesday, noon central is when the store will go live for the 2023 World's merch. Um, if you're a patron, you already have access to it. You can buy it right now. Uh, but yeah, get ex I'm fucking stoked. It's, it's the, it's, if anybody knows the type of merch that I enjoy is that I like minimalistic. Like, I don't like, I'm not a big fan of things that scream out at you. So that's kind of what we've done for all of our drops is that they've been minimal. Um, in terms of like overall design, they, we've done colorways of the ProTalk logo and this colorway is the one I'm most excited about. Um, because it uses the colors of like the, the halo world championship HCS logo that they have. It uses similar colors to that. I'm super, super excited. Um, and yeah, unless it's a sticker. What do you mean? The sticker is the same color. 
It's just it's just holographic, so it has like a, a cool sheen to it. But they're the same colors as the logo that we did for the design. Um, but like I'm super I'm super excited. It's it's the fa- it's my favorite one that we've ever done by far. And, and no offense to the other logos that we've done. I'm just I'm just super super stoked for this, and I hope you guys are as well. Um, and there's a couple products that I've said this week's week in week out. There's a couple products that are going to be included in this drop that I'm doing as a test for what I'm going to, what I'm calling an off season drop. Um, that obviously will release during the off season. We have a couple ideas. One of them will is what was asked in chat. Like, can we get a, uh, words are hard shirt that is, uh, mm. definitely in the cards. Um, and there's a couple ideas percolating in the head right now as to what I want to do with like an off season drop. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, even if you don't buy anything, that's perfectly fine as well. Just I'm just super fucking stoked about this. I hope you guys are as well. Wednesday at noon this week is when it will drop. Um, it'll it'll be available all through the weekend of the event as well, um, up until like the Tuesday or Wednesday after the event. So, again, we wanted to give you guys an opportunity to purchase it ahead of time if you wanted to wear or bring an item to Worlds. That was the whole justification for it. Will had the idea, fucking loved the idea, uh, so we're running with it, and there you go. Um, I I am going to just put this out there. There are no footy pajamas. Unfortunately, there's not. The distributor that we go through does not have them, so we just cannot make them, okay? But never say never. We'll just, we'll wait for the, we'll wait to see what happens in the future. But that's why we gave the idea to fucking Space Station, you know? That's why we gave the idea to them. They need to run with it. They need to make fucking footy pajamas. I wouldn't be opposed to having a little logo on one, on like a leg pant or whatever. I don't care. Just include us in some capacity. God damn it. I want my residuals. God. <laughs> um, they can make it look like a whole ass space suit too. They could see. We're literally feeding them ideas right now. Will. God damn. The question is, does it have a hood or no? It's got to, right? Oh, it has to. And it has to be in the style of like a space station helmet. Yep. Perfect. And you, it has to be a zippable one so you can actually like zip it up and enclose it around your face. So make it look like the space station helmet. It's got the little prong sticking up on the side. Fine with me. If they, if they want to do like the cat ears, like on a Spartan helmet, they could do that for all I care. I, I just like this guys. If anybody from SSG is listening right now. Make it fucking happen. Okay? We're we're feeding this uh, to you on a silver fucking platter. Make it happen. And we'll buy them. All right? I know for a fact I'll buy it. And I know for a fucking fact a lot of other people are going to buy it too. Because this this is a million dollar a billion trillion dollar idea right here sure. fucking sure. footy pajamas all right make it happen oh. guys ladies and gentlemen that's it for episode three 305 mr worldwide <laughs> Um, John says, I can check with a place that makes smaller batches of merch. If you want, please do, please do the one, the one thing that I request John is what I enjoy about the vendors that we've worked with is that it's made on demand. The, the one thing I don't want is I don't want to go through a distributor that, that demands that you pay ahead of time for a certain allotment. And then you have to sell through that allotment because like, I just don't it's know. Crap if it, shoot. Yeah. It's a crap shoot. You don't know. So that's why I want things that make them on demand. The distributor that we work with right now makes it on demand. So it just works out better for everybody involved. Um, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for episode three Oh five. Mr. Worldwide for the week of September 17th, 2023. If there's one thing that people should remember is that Halo is, in fact, for everyone. We'll be back next week to hopefully hopefully on a more lighter note. 
But if not, we'll talk about whatever happens. That's going to do it for us. We'll see you next week. Merch on Wednesday. But until then, bye-bye.